I'm Sam Sheridan from Sheridan Computers, and today I'm going to go over how to set up an IPsec VPN with two PFSense boxes. Um, I've been asked a couple of times if I'd um, do this, so I figured we might as well do it while I've got two, um, two PFSense boxes available and set up. So if you find this video useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If um, you hit the notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any new videos as they are released. If you'd like to hire us for any IT related projects, if you head across to our website at sheridan.co.uk and click on the hire us button, uh, fill out the form, leave some details on what you're looking for and we'll get back to you. As always, while you're on our website, if you uh, have a look around, you can find out more information on who we are, some of the people that we deal with and some of the work that we do. Um, so let's head across to PFSense and um, start taking a look. So I've got two PFSense boxes set up. Um, one on uh, 192.168.1.1 and the other one is on 192.168.2.1. They're on separate external IP addresses and I'm going to be establishing an, IP, establishing an IPsec VPN between the two of them. So the first thing we need to do, it doesn't matter which, uh, which end you did start doing this from, um, is go into VPN and IPsec. And so now we want to add a new tunnel. So go ahead and click on the add button. Um, so we've got a few options that we need to um, set up in here. I'm going to change the uh, key exchange to IKE version 2 since uh, it's PFSense on both sides, so it's supported on both sides. Internet protocol will leave to IPv4. Uh, interface 1. Remote gateway, you need to put the IP address in it of the uh, system that you're connected to. Uh, you can put a description if you want. Um, authentication method, mutual PSK, um, I identify and pair identify, you can leave an IP address and then generate a pre-shared key. So now you have your pre-shared key. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, so AES, um, depends on the hardware that you're using. I generally always try and set it up with, um, 256. Um, so we'll say AAS256, uh, hash256 and DH group 14. Um, after that, we've got the lifetime. We can leave that as it is, it's fine. Um, 28800. Um, under the advanced options, I don't believe there's anything we need to set. Um, you can set to responder only if you want like one side to receive and one side to um, send. Um, the rest of it, we can pretty much leave as it is. Go ahead and apply those changes. Um, so now we need to set up the phase two entries. So if we go into phase two entries, and we add phase two entry. So mode, we want tunnel, uh, local network, land subnet. So that's fine. Um, you can also change this if you want to specify a network separately. I will show you a reason to do that. We'll leave it on LAN subnet. And NAT and um, BINAT we can leave. Remote network, so you need to put the um, subnet in of the remote network at the other end, which is 192.168.1.0, sorry, 2.0. And it's on a 24, because it's on 255.255.255.0. Again, you can stick in a description if you want. Um, protocol. Uh, we can leave on uh, BSP, which is encrypted. Untick all these options. And I'm going to set the encryption algorithm to 256 bits as well. And hash algorithms, I'm also going to leave on SHA256. Um, the group is 14. And the lifetime, that's fine and apply those changes. So now we need to go ahead and configure the opposite side of the network. Um, so we created a pre-shared key and I generated it, so I need to go ahead and copy that. Okay. So we've copied the pre-shared key, so we need to go ahead and sort the other side out. So again, go into VPN, IPsec, Add phase one, 
I'm going to on IKE version 2. For the internet protocol, I'm going to leave it on IPv version 4 for this. Uh, interface is a one that you're connecting over, so that's fine. And then you need to put the IP address in of the So under IP address, you need to put the IP address in of the uh, box that we're connecting to again. Uh, we had a mutual PSK, so same settings, and your settings need to remain the same across the two. Let's copy that pre-shared key in. Um, and we had the algorithm set to AES, it was on 256, the hash was set to 256, and the uh, DH group was set to 256. We left the lifetime as default on 28800. Um, again, you only need to set responder only if you don't want it to actually start initializing requests. Um, that's pretty much it. So it was exactly the same settings for the other side. Other than the IP address, you need to give the corresponding IP address of the box that you're connecting to. Let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to apply the changes. And like we did with the uh, first one, we now need to add the phase two. So for phase two, exactly the same as we had the other settings, tunnel IPv4. Uh, the local network will just leave to a LAN subnet. Not in uh, bin app translation, I'm just gonna leave the network. Now again, we need to put the LAN subnet in of the network on the other side, which is 1.0. Description, up to you. Uh, it's a protocol we had set to ESP. We had this set to 256. And we want to make sure the hash algorithm, the only one we had selected was SHA256. The PFS key group was set to 14. And that was it. Let's go ahead and apply the changes. So that should be our... Um, IPsec VPN created. So if we go in here, now we'll look at related status. And as you can see, we are now connected. Um, so there was an option to set networks, so that's fine, and you can we're connected that way. Um, might need to check the firewall settings actually. So IPsec. Um, so what we're going to want to do on here is basically allow all traffic um, on the to roam the local area network. So if we do add, I'm going to do pass and set to IPsec. For the interface, uh, address family, we're going to use an IPv4 anyway. Um, but I'll set it to both. Protocol, we're going to set to any. Um, the source, we're going to leave at any. And the destination, we're going to leave at any. Um, so that's not opening your firewall up to the outside world. It's literally just allowing um, IPsec traffic to pass through. And we need to do that on both sides. And I'll show you why I set it to any in a second. Let's go ahead and add that rule again. Exactly the same settings that we did previously. So interface is IPsec, the address family, I'm going to set to both. I'm going to do that. I said we only use an IPv4, but um, I'll set it to both in case we decide to go with others in the future. Any protocol. So the source and destination we're leaving as any. So that's basically how your we should look on both sides. And with that, you should have a fully functional um, IPsec VPN setup. So I'm going to pull a client across that's on here. Uh, so my IP address on this is 192.168.1.101 which is assigned from the router that we're connected to. So I should now be able to ping the router on the other side. I've got no 
devices or anything on the other side, but trust me, it does work. So if I do ping 192.168.2.1, as you can see, that network is now working. So I did mention when we set this up, we put the source, uh, we just basically allowed any rather than we just uh, um, allowing from one network to the other. And the reason for that was um, if you have a uh, VLAN on the other side, for example, 10.1.10.0, uh, .10 for example, and you need to pass that across the VPN, how do we do that? Because that's only allowing traffic from 192, 168, whatever. Um, so let's have a look at how we should uh, go ahead and do that. So this is 192.168.1.1. But let's say on this side of the um, network, we also have 192.168.1.3, for example, um, for our accounts department. Um, in fact, I'll do it with 10.1.10.1 just to keep the less confusion out of it. Um, so how do we pass that across a VPN? Um, the subnet range doesn't really matter as long as you put it in properly. So we're going to IP, uh, IPsec VPN. And you can see on this side, we have the phase two entries. Now if we click at the phase two entries, it's showing our tunnel, the local LAN subnet, um, which is 192.168.1, and the remote subnet, which is 192.168.2.0. Um, so if we had like, like I said, 10.1.10.1 .10 .1 or 192.168.3, it really doesn't matter. Um, but on this side, like, let's go and add the entry in for this. We basically just need to pass the entries across for your VLANs as well. Um, so on this side, we're going to go add. And again, we're going to leave it to tunnel to IPv4. But instead of having the LAN subnet, I'd want to put the address in of our VLAN on this side. So I put in like uh, 10.1.10.1.0, .1 for example. So if we have a 10.1.10 .10 network, um, and then for the remote network, that's going to be 192.168.2.0. So we'll leave that exactly the same settings as the previous entry that we did. Uh, so that's the uh, normal remote network. And this is our new entry because this is going to be our VLAN on this side if it existed. Um, and with that, again, same options. Set that to uh, 256. The hash algorithms to SHA256 as well. Leave the group on 14. So you can basically leave all this uh, as default, but you just want to make sure you set this to 256 or 128, whichever way you're using it. Make sure you've got your, uh, your VLAN network here and then 192.168.2.0 there. So we go ahead and save that. Apply the changes. Now if we look at phase two entries, you see, so our local subnet 10.1.10.0 is here. And we're passing it across to 192.168.2.0 at the other end because we only have one network on the other side, but we want that to be able to access this network as well. So now we need to go ahead and do those exact same changes, but in the reverse order, the same way we did with the LAN subnet. So if we go into VPN, IPsec, and show phase two entries. So you can see for uh, the remote subnet is 1.0. I'm using the LAN subnet here, which is 2.0. So we're going to add another entry to allow us to access the 10.1 subnet from but our 192.168.2 subnet. So we're going to add a second phase two entry. So tunnel IPv4 as usual. Now this side, the LAN subnet is going to say stay the same because we're not, you know, we've not got multiple uh, networks on this side that we're accessing. We want to access 10.1.10 .10 from our 192.168.2. Um, and in here we put 10.1.10.0. So we put the uh, VLAN address there. And then again, set these to however you're deciding to set them up. So I'm on 256 again. My hash algorithms, 256. These have to match basically on both ends when you're setting it up. As long as you keep your settings the same on both ends, they match, you'll work. Let's go ahead and save that. 
So when the pilot changes. Now you can see on this side we have 192.168.1.0 as a remote subnet coming from our 192.168.2 and we have 10.1.10.0 as a remote subnet coming from here. 192.168.2 again. And again, just to confirm, that's the same LAN subnet across to 192.168.2 and then a local subnet of 10.1.10.0 across to there. Um, so that's why I said if you set in your IP sec up, I just did it. I would normally put the subnets in um, just because I'm security conscious that way. But allowing all, you can basically just keep adding your subnets in and you don't need to worry about um, the IP sec firewall rules too much. And again, to uh, see the status of your IP sec connection, if we go into VPN, where we are now, VPN, IP sec, and then we do related status. We can see the phase one here, and then we can see the child entries. Now, as you'll notice, there's only one child entry, uh, and this is because we need to restart the connection. So if we disconnect, and then connect again, And now you'll see we've got 10.1.10.0, both going across this tunnel. So that's basically how you send uh, VLANs across the same IPsec tunnel. I hope this video helps. Uh, somebody asked me about it and I've recently set it up for a client where we needed to do this. Um, but somebody did ask in how you send more than one subnet over the same IP sector. That's exactly how you do it. If you found this video useful, um, please take the time to hit the like button. Uh, I know I keep bashing on about it, but I need to get all the likes that I can at the moment. Um, consider subscribing to the channel also, and if you hit the notifications icon, as mentioned at the beginning, you'll get notifications of any new videos as they are released. And to hire us for any networking stuff, please head across to our website, sheridan.co.uk, and click on the Hire Us form. I'll see you in the next video.